so the English Premier League title race has been the gift that keeps on giving and defending, depending on the team you call your own this past weekend may have just been the gift you have uh, never asked for. But in the case of Mariah Ramarak and the City fans all over the world, they are back in the driver's seat. Both Liverpool and Arsenal were handed damaging losses at the weekend, while the citizens notched a crucial win, sending them to the top. That happened from Saturday. Let's have a quick look at the weekend results in the English Premier League. Newcastle 4 0 over Tottenham, jolting Tottenham's UCL qualification hopes. Brentford 2 0 over Sheffield United. Luton beaten 5 1 by Manchester City. Nottingham Forest 2 2 with Wolves. Brighton 1 1 at Burnley. Bournemouth 2 2 against travelling Manchester United. Crystal Palace winning 1 0 at Liverpool. West Ham beaten at home by Fulham. Aston Villa 2 0 over Arsenal. Chelsea 6 0 over Everton. That happened today. So based on these results, we're looking at Manchester City, top of the table on 73 points, two ahead of Arsenal and Liverpool, who share second, although Arsenal are ahead on goal difference of Liverpool. Aston Villa with their weekend victory moving up to 63 points. Tottenham on 60 and losing ground. Newcastle on 50 points. So that's how the top six in the English Premier League, uh, that's how they're setting up at the moment. And here is uh, Liverpool boss Jurgen Klopp following the jolting 1-0 home defeat they had against Crystal Palace. We, 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 we got because we were against the ball an absolute machine and that's what we have to be. In that moment, we have the rhythm, we have the momentum in the game, it's difficult for the opponent, they don't feel great, we feel much better and then we, these boys can really play football. Today they showed that in a really difficult situation that they can do that and that was good. But it doesn't feel great anyway now because we lost the game and we had we, we, we planned this day completely differently. But here we are. And now, um, how is that? We have to deal with that. Yeah, so Liverpool missing a lot of scoring opportunities there and suffering a damaging 1-0 loss. Now, after being handed their first loss of 2024, the Arsenal boss, Mikel Arteta, says now is the time for his team to rise to the occasion. And now is the moment to stand up as a leader, as a character, um, to make yourself count. Because when you win and 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 win for four months, it's very, very simple to do it. The moment is now. We don't have any other solution. If you want to win championship, if you want to be there in the Champions League, when you have these moments, you have to stand up. If not, that means that you don't have a quality that is very, very necessary. And now it's, it's a big test for us. And from the Manchester City perspective, Pep Guardiola says his players are relishing the pressure of the title race. They like to play the pressure. They like to know is uh, dead or alive. So yeah, they, they did it. That doesn't mean we are going to do it. But that we are there, it will be there until the end, I'm pretty sure. Because I know them. I see the faces before the game in the meetings, how they prepare. That means win Premier League champ. No. I'm not saying that, but that we'll compete, that's for sure. Yes, yeah, so or football analyst Brent Sancho joins us now via Zoom. Brent, this title race, uh, a cinema, isn't it? I, I want to say quickly, though, that while the Arsenal-Liverpool losses this weekend were not expected, Man City climbing to the top of the table isn't surprising because given what we've seen from this Man City team in the recent past, they show that they have the stomach for this kind of scenario. Yeah, I like the phrases that you're using, Lance, uh, the stomach for this type of title. They do. And, and uh, you know, we talk so much about uh, Arsenal's frailty. Now we're seeing some chinks in the armor of Liverpool who normally uh, can do well in these sorts of situations. But uh, when you juxtapose that against Manchester City, a team that is built for these types of situations. I've, I've always said on this show, I don't think people realize how difficult a task it is to keep winning the way Pep does. And not just, uh, not just winning football games or eking out results, but dominating football teams for 95% of the season. Uh, and he would easily go down as one of the greatest managers of all time simply because of what he's been able to do. But there's something that it is a, a characteristic of his team that we've seen uh, since he's gotten into Manchester City and even before that, is that they have what you call title credentials. They understand the importance of executing when it matters. And that's what makes Manchester City so special. Yeah, I want to compare the two losses that Liverpool and Arsenal um, suffered. 
the Arsenal loss, given the fact that it's a top five team that had beaten them and a team challenging for a spot in, in Europe, that may be regarded as, a, as lesser of a surprise than the Crystal Palace result they got of Liverpool because uh, Crystal Palace are toward the, the, the bottom half of the, of the table. Yeah, I think when you start to take a deep dive into it and you move away from, obviously, the attributes that you need to win a title, you look at the Liverpool loss, uh, they will certainly look back at some of the missed chances that they had uh, throughout the game. And a lot of those chances were going into the back of the net when you had the likes of uh, the front three that they had before, led by Salah, who's not uh, typically been up to his sharp sub that he's been, Darren Nunes. We know his his uh, challenges, despite being a tremendous player and an asset for Liverpool, he's just not seen the frequency and potency that we've seen in the past when you had the likes, as I mentioned, Salah, Bobby Firmino, etc. Uh, and uh, and Luis, yeah, so the goals that they normally get, Lance, and they normally win them titles, it's just not there for Liverpool. But in the Arsenal situation, it was it looks like a complete collapse in the second half. I was looking at it and I was absolutely amazed to see a team that's challenging uh, for a title. Yesterday, they're playing against a top four or five team. But I go back again to my comparisons to Manchester City. When you are in these situations with the amount of games that are left in the season, you find your championship medal. Uh, and it just looked like the longer the game went on uh, at uh, Arsenal, at the Emirates, it just looked more and more likely uh, that they were going to lose. And, and that's a disappointing thing. I think when Arteta looks back at it, uh, he may look at it and think that uh, something fell wrong within the team in the second half. And then they go, they do, they do have this difficult fixture against Bayern during the week here. You just hope that the unraveling that we saw in the Villa game does not become something contagious and now plagues them with the running that they have. Yeah, you know, I listened to Pep Guardiola print and he says that Manchester City will be there at the end and he's very confident about that. Not saying that they will definitely win, but they will be right there on the final day. Of the three teams, which do you suspect, um, if any at all, might not be there at the very end? I think that's a good question. And, and normally, in these sorts of situations, I, I would lean to Arsenal because I have been quite uh, stiff on them for many for many years on this programme. But I just feel it's Liverpool. And, and I'll tell you why. Because the, we've, saw, we've seen this deterioration. You look at the Atalanta result. Yes, albeit they didn't start a lot of their, their, their key figures. But there was a deterioration there that is not symbolic with a Liverpool club team. Uh, there was defensive frailties. There was, a, there was a, a certainly... Uh, a team that looked a bit clueless, well in possession. They didn't see the identity that's normally, of course, uh, attributed to, to a club team throughout the, the minutes. And, but it, it's not something that, you know, that happened in a one-off game. It really started. And, and I could go even further back, some of the results that they escaped uh, and they've got results here and they a draw here. Uh, but the, that deterioration, we've seen it now happening. And I just wonder if this team could put the car in reverse and, and, and of course, try to get out of this mud that they're stuck in. But... It's, it's building, it's growing, and it, it seems to be rep repetitive. And I do I do wonder and fear for Liverpool moving forward because, again, they have that difficult fixture against a very difficult Bergamo Stadium in Atalanta. And if that's another loss, then it becomes a, a, a almost the alarm bells and sirens ringing. Yeah, but where is the deterioration happening for Liverpool? I watched the game yesterday, and I thought to myself, on another day, Liverpool could have won this by six goals to two. Um, as it turned out, they lost it by a goal to nil, but um, Diego Jota had an empty goal. Mohamed Salah had opportunities. Um, Jones, one and one with the keeper, Curtis Jones, and he couldn't score. Darwin Nunes, he had opportunities as well. So it's not as if they did not create chances. They did, and they should have won the game. And I think um, Klopp pointed at that in the press conference as well. So I'm very interested to hear from you where exactly you think the deterioration is happening, or is it a case of, well, yesterday it was the finishing, but on other days it's the goalkeeper, or maybe it's the midfield not coming to the party? Yeah, and, and the word, the word uh, is sharpness. The, the sharpness that we used to see from a Liverpool team, where they bury, the cha bury chances, half chances, uh, etc. But when you look at the Atalanta game, and I go back to that as well, you saw some of the defensive frailties and the sharpness, the lack of sharpness at the back. We saw in the game against, even against Palace, there was a chance that, of course, uh, Robertson had to clear off the line. Again, that's a, the sharpness that we, we used to see in defensively uh, from Liverpool. They did rear its head as well. So 
throughout the game, and I, I'm happy you mentioned goalkeepers as well. That was a situation in the Atalanta game. So the sharpness, the overall sharpness that we see, and I may even add the word efficiency that we see with a Liverpool team, especially when it comes to the business end of the season. And that's what we're talking about here. The business end, the end that wins you trophies, is really lacking. And I'm, 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 as I said, I'm a bit surprised with that, with the type of talent. Because when you look at the personnel, it's not a lot of changes within the Liverpool team. There's still, there's still a lot of players that won a lot of trophies there. But there's not much wrong with the way Klopp has set his team up. There's a lot wrong with the individual sharpness that we have come so used to seeing when you talk about the Liverpool team. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about my favourite team in the English Premier League, um, <laughs> Arsenal. We had quite a discussion, a number of discussions <laughs> last season. Lance is over there greening from ear to ear, and I don't know why. But we had a, a number of discussions last season about Arsenal bottling it. And, uh, you know, I couldn't help after yesterday's defeat. And I know that Lance pointed to the fact that they were going up against a top five team in Aston Villa. Um, but I think going into that one, most people expected Arsenal to win that game. Then Liverpool lost. Um, and I can't help but think to myself that Liverpool losing and Arsenal getting into pole position and you now feel that um, your destiny is in your own hands might have affected the result of yesterday's match. I don't know what you think, Brent. Listen, uh, appearing on the zone for so many years, a lot of Arsenal fans here in Trinidad and Tobago always give me a lot of flack and stick because I do use the word bottling it. I do use the word that Arsenal winning mentality is not there. I do use the words and sentences and phrases that Arsenal does not have a championship feel to them. And I will continue to use it because it is very evident. And, and the reason why I say what I say about Manchester City, because they have given me evidence over the year that they are a championship team. This Arsenal team, uh, and for the last couple of years, they just don't give me that. And you're right. When you're a player and you sit in that locker room, you would know that Liverpool just, just lost a game, which gives you full position to go to the top. There's everything within you. If you do have that championship medal, if you do have that championship belief, that this is a result that could possibly put you right in the pathway of going on to winning the Premiership. But what happens is they come out and give that performance against Villa. Yes, I take credence to the fact that, yes, it's a Villa side that's had a phenomenal season. But I will always ask the question, if this was Manchester City playing against Villa at the Etihad, I am very sure I know what the result would be simply because Manchester City has championship medal and Arsenal do it. Yeah, I have to ask you this one as well, Brent. Away from the title race, Leon Bailey, the Jamaican scoring for Aston Villa, having come on as a second half a substitute. Um, how important do you think this goal was for him? And generally that he continues to perform well at the back end of this season for Aston Villa, especially in the aftermath of his recent interview where he suggested that um, he wouldn't mind going to a, a big four club. And I know that his team came out and said, well, what you heard is not what he meant. Um, but the fact is, it was still said a number of papers across the world um, picked that up. Um, but yesterday came on as a substitute and got another big goal because remember when Villa beat um, Manchester City earlier this season, he scored as well. Listen, one thing I know about sport, once you're performing, once you're hitting targets and once you're being a star, nine times out of ten, they forget your, some of your, your, your utterances in the media. Uh, and that's what Liam Bailey needs to do. I, and I will also say that I'm a bit surprised that he signed a, a, an extension at Villa because I do agree with him. I can see Leon Bailey move into a top four team because he has that sort of pedigree as a player. Uh, and if you look at his stats, if you look at his numbers, if you look at his play at Villa, I know most Jamaican fans might not agree because he has not performed significantly well at the national team level. But if you look at what he's done and the body of work he's done at Aston Villa, I can see him fitting into a team. I can see him fitting into a, a, a top four team. So it's important for him to keep getting these sorts of goals. It's important for him to keep playing the way he has been playing at Aston Villa. There's, there's absolutely no one could come out and say that Liam Billy has been a failure at Aston Villa because he's been far opposite to that. I think he's been an absolute star. He's been an integral part of what Unai Emery has been trying to do at Villa, and he's been an impact player. 
Uh, and as I said, I, I finished with what I, I, I started with. I'm extremely surprised that he signed an extension at Villa because I felt that if he, he left it open, I think suitors would have come in for him. Yeah, but Brent, isn't it a case, though, that we should be looking at it that Villa is now a top four team and could consistently be a top four team? And so he's already um, operating in a top four team. I think they, they have the possibility, Ricardo, to be a, a top four team. But you have to take consistently. That, yes, because, I think they, are, the because they, are, they are a top they four are team right moment. now. <laughs> right, right now at the moment. Yes, and at I the think moment. You have, to, yeah. you have to take things into context. Of course, uh, we've seen a bit of a drop off from Spurs. Uh, Manchester United still having their struggles and their problems. Yes, but uh, that's ten Ch years, Brent. That well. didn't that didn't start last month. No, it didn't start last month, and I'm glad you pointed that out. But uh, <laughs> at some point, we do hope for Manchester United to find their legs somewhere. The point I'm making is I, I'm not sure that Aston Villa, if you ask me right now if Aston Villa is going to consistently be a top four team, I would have to say no. Um, and I would have to stick with that because I just don't think they are built that way to be a top four team. I think Unai Emery has a lot of credit to take in why they are where they are, because I think he's a tactical genius. But at some point next season, I think teams are going to start to figure him out and situations may become a little bit be difficult for Aston Villa. And again, they may have to take on Champions League football next season. Can they operate uh, with having uh, two sets of uh, two sets of plates of food on the table? I don't, I'm not sure. Mm. Brent, we're, we're out of time. I don't know why the producer isn't wrapping us up. He's enjoying our conversation so much, but quick one. Are you a Manchester United fan? I would. I don't know why you'd make such a pronouncement. Um, actually, no, it's a, a question. I, I, I'm, I, I'm a Juventus fan, and I stay well out of England uh, because uh, I've, I've started watching football, Italian football, at a very young age. Okay. I've it, never been pulled into the English system. No, thankfully. it's just because you always say things like, we need Manchester United to get back to the glory days. Um, can't wait for Manchester United. We all it's, want it's, Manchester United to... Yeah, I, you had me a little bit confused. Race. It's starting to look like La Liga where there's only two teams. We need more teams involved in the race. <laughs> like yeah, Aston yeah. Villa. We're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a break. We'll be back with more on the Sportsback Zone. Mariah's next with the second zone update.